What was the uh, biggest takeaway from Mr. Pape? Uh, I was trying to figure out why people would care about tokenization over Wall Street, and he gave a pretty good example. It's I mean, kind of just good. goes back to just character of human and what people want to do. No, but he was right that like when you invest early in like Google and stuff, like those are often the only decision makers. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. with tokenization, like more people have more say. But also, I don't know. It could all this could go sideways, like the internet did. And I, I, like, I mean, I, I do. It's just troughs and it's highs and lows, man. It's like you said, the beginning of the internet was very developer based. It was pretty open. And then you kind of overcorrect that into very centralized stuff. And now people are overcorrecting again into a, to the what it's been in the past with a little bit of evolution from the previous iteration. Uh, you still, you could get a say, but I, I do think that, I mean, if you have most more tokens than other people, if, if voting is set up by just sheer amount of tokens for a, for a, a governance, model then you still still kind of just working by wealth um however in google aspect mm-hmm. the advertisers are making a lot of money but the advertisers aren't also the shareholders so mm-hmm. they don't have as much incentive to like for the well-being of the customer there's a there's a lot more on the shoulders of people that participate in the projects to prop up the projects at a certain point like there's i have as as a so i was reading a book called life after google it's a pretty cool book i can't really say what was in it <laughs> because Off there top. is no life after google <laughs> um but it was, it was it was just talking about how first of all google doesn't have customers and when you don't have customers everything's free so you're indebted to advertisers and then you have a, a bad advertising experience mostly for people on the internet which i you know i still think that most people i don't know if their hill to die on is bad advertising on the internet it is a little disruptive if people can make advertising and, and they've, they've done a little bit with research they, so they have I, I didn't really ask about their advertising model which i should have but they you can stake the pre-token to get top advertising spots i believe which mm. i think is pretty cool um so that's a little less disruptive of an ad model because i don't know you might you might have uh I, I i mean at least it props up the business i should ask about advertising get them on another time um but there's google doesn't have a product you know they don't sell anything so they're just indebted to ads just like instagram and other stuff um but with a lot more projects people that are using the projects have a lot more synonym for incentive because i don't want to use incentive so much um to prop up a project and like uh, um say again so you're saying if 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 the customer is paying for the project they have more incentive to make the project good or make the product good like Apple, like we pay for their service, so they don't need to track us with advertising. So that's why they're like, we're just going to well, make this as good as possible. Yeah, there's there's different back end for what the company has to do. Company slash project. People just call crypto stuff projects. They're coming. <laughs> but, you know, entities. Uh, if you get money straight from a consumer off top, you're a little more indebted to the consumer rather than ha- having to go to another entity for funding, you know. It does just kind of just goes back to users of projects funding the projects. Yeah. Overcorrection. Like I said, everything's overcorrection, and there's going to be a middle where it's going to be less very gung-ho on this side, and it might be a nice middle. Like, I like privacy. A lot, a lot of projects are like, yo, everything's in the public. And this is like the opposite of that. I like talking to people who were aware of the of what was going on when the internet was coming up. 
Yeah, they're not that old. <laughs> Makes yeah, it. they're like in their fifties and stuff. Not like, like most people are like like forty. Oh, I didn't use the internet until my son was like ten. Yeah. Like, damn. <laughs> it's very interesting. But what did he say? What did he say? What was he say? Twenty five hundred dollars a month or something? He was paying for internet access. Something servery, man. Yeah, like not everybody. I'm saying also, I understand. There's a lot. There's overcorrection, like I say, of people that are very into tech, and that might not always go towards mass consumer. And I'm always interested a little bit more with mass consumer. But he he was right where he said. I don't know if he's right, but I, I enjoy his take where you can't really, I don't know. I agree with that though, but he said he, he, he kind of have to just build like with the early vision and not like the end of what it could be in the future. Like you have to iterate on what you're building and the progress that comes from that. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. You know, it's interesting. I've been watching a lot of Steve Jobs stuff, and he, in the early days, in the 90s, he didn't seem very interested in the internet when he was making, like, when he was building Next and building Pixar and building... Um, it's not very internet-based. I mean, the Mac and stuff. Huh? It's not very internet-based. Well, like, people were at, reporters were asking him, like, yo, uh, are you excited about this internet thing where your products ever have the power to connect to the internet because people want the internet in their homes? And Steve Jobs would always say, yeah, yeah, that's cool, that's fine, but look at this, you know? What was he look? what was this? It would be like, it would be like the, the colorful iMac that he made in the, whatever year that was, 98, or... Look at this. We just made Toy Story. It's the first three D animated motion picture, you know? Like So that might have been him in his mind and all his tech people are like, yo, internet's gonna be banging. But he might have been like, yo, okay, people don't care. So I'm gonna do a flashy little object in front of them and then we'll I, funnel them into the internet. I don't think he thought people didn't care. He was just like because when he was announcing the what fucking computer was it? It was the Blue Mac, the Blue Mac that came out in like, I don't know what year, early 2000s, late 90s. And he said, There's no internet on that. There is. But when he announced it, it was just so like, so fast. He like gl glided over it. Mm -hmm. And people like erupted in applause when he said it. The internet? Yeah. Okay. But like, it seemed like he didn't care. So, I mean, what were the competitors at the time? There was PCs, Dell. Well, this was, this was Apple's first product after almost going bankrupt so <laughs> they could have released anything and it would have been okay probably and this was was a, a, there's pc competitors yeah uh yeah i think dell was around um gateway i had i mean i had a dell computer in my household but the um, real competitor was uh microsoft as always shout out yeah um i'm kind microsoft of just didn't make computers back then but i, I still oh really it just made Windows. Oh, really? Yeah. Microsoft didn't make a computer until the until a couple years, like recently. I guess the, I kind of intuitively the tablet like that. computers or laptops. They were they are the uh, software company at heart. Yeah. Not hardware. It's probably why they won because they're like, yo, everyone's making hardware, dude. Let me let's just make stuff that everybody puts on their stuff. That's literally why they won because they're like, we want to work <laughs> with everybody, and Steve was like, nah. Fuck that. So he might have been computers at the time might have been a little more, but I don't think they were because people had some PCs and they weren't geeks. They were like household people. But mm -hmm. he, he might have just made it more consumer friendly and not like, yeah, this is amazing technology and more so this is really fun to have in your home. Yeah, that's what Steve wanted it to be. Like, I want like the computer to be fun i want a kid to be able to use it and paint like look at it it's smiling at you it looks like a face and that's where i kind of come scary. from like a scary. product perspective because I, I mean that's just marketing get get an emotion and then funnel into like the tech of it and how it's cool but people don't even i mean tech's tech people i'm using the internet i don't know how how many cords are running through china under the sea but would you use it if it weren't this easy to use uh probably <laughs> like if you had to 
if we, if you and I had to like wait 15 minutes for a dial up connection to work and this was just a, a horrible experience, Yeah, yeah, yeah. would we use this or would we be like, fuck it, let's just fucking, Technology you know? always precedes people's tendencies. So, like, culture always comes from technology in the world. So, people doing, like, literally podcasts. I'm sure there are people that were doing audio things in, in the early days, but as someone made a technology that made it accessible, people had... a lot more inclination to use audio shows and stuff. Um, so I do think that if you make a good uh, experience, it's a lot easier for people to use it. It's friction. Then you probably get the, the outskirts and the early adopters are into the tech. If it's very cool. Um, so a lot of what that book, Life After Google, was talking about as well, and he touched on it, um, was that like, It's a lot of tech is uh, very AI and automation based, which is good, kind of, but it loses the aspect of, of humanness in it. So it, 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 it lacks a certain like mindset of does this actually help people rather than like, okay, we got to, we got, we, we have a, a machine learning thing that does math with data. But the, at the end, the end consumer goal is kind of lost in the in a little bit. Um, and in Google's case, maybe not lost, but given to other people. And that's, I think, a lot what a lot of projects are, are working on as well. I'm kind of getting back to it. It's like you overcorrected to super tech again. You got a lot of tech. You have companies making cool tech. But then they got lost. And it's kind of funny. Remember the engineering thing you brought up about engineers stereotypically didn't get with like partners. So they, they just kind of got lost in tech and lost some human contact and like cues. I think you're, you're coming down from that and kind of back to like the humanness of technology where you have to build it up and get super techy and. Not like tech doesn't exist behind it, but it goes back to like human interaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you have to admit, you can't skip that crucial step of overcorrecting. You can't I think get this it's all astray. it's all necessary because you still learn from an overcorrection. Because, like, if you look at, I don't know, like, YouTube's a really, a pretty user-friendly site. Right. Like, you can, people can navigate around it fairly easily, easy to type, easy to click a button, you know it's going to go to the video. All the mess and trash, I'm not going to say trash because I'm sure it's very organized code, but all the trial and error that went into making sure that web page loads correctly and differently for every person, like, there's... no way you can just jump from 1995 to 2020 in terms of like a user experience. Yeah, I agree. It's all very necessary, but Yeah. you just got to learn from the last step. Who knows how, how friendly the user experience could become. This could still be very rough compared to what we're going to get to. I You think, know what I, I mean? I do think that's what people are thinking about. And, it, but it's also kind of like a bandaid full because right now this is pretty like, okay, user experience. But I think there are things that, could be better i don't even i don't really know what they are because i'm because especially with tech products you get very lulled into it and you're like oh this is the best thing i've ever seen and you kind Well, of 